Thessalonians, and we're going to look at a few verses and, and get in there in the fifth chapter. We're going to look at one verse in the uh, fifth chapter, 1 Thessalonians, and that's uh, verse number 19. And when you have it, say amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Everybody have it? Some of some are still looking. First Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to look over at verse 19. And I'm going to go up a few verses, you know, just because it's Tuesday and we had Bible study. Is that all right? But I want to land at verse 19. And, uh, Start up at verse uh, 14, I guess we can start with. And it says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourself and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Verse 19. And do not quench the spirit. Amen. Amen. Do not quench the spirit. Father, we again submit ourselves to you. And Lord, we ask that you would open our hearts to your word. That you would speak to us and that we would receive what you have given us today. Lord, hide me behind the cross and use me as your vessel. Lord, we love you and adore you, and we thank you. And Lord, we ask you to help us not to quench your spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Quenching the spirit. Now, the one thing that we can't do, we can't prevent God from accomplishing his work in the world around us. But we can quench his spirit in our lives. What is quenching the spirit? Quenching the spirit is when we ignore, disobey, or reject what the Holy Spirit is instructing us. Let me read it again. Quenching the spirit is when we ignore disobey or reject what the Holy Spirit is instructing us. What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is He. He is the third person in the Trinity. Well, we have freedom. As God's people, as God's created uh, uh, mankind, we do have freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. He didn't make us a robot, yep. but he has given us freedom. He's given us the freedom even to withstand the Holy Spirit's activity in our lives. Right. Well, look with me in Genesis chapter 1. We're going to land in verse 27 and 28 it says so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing 
that moves on the earth. God's giving us freedom. We can go over there, we can go over there. He's giving us the ability to move around as freely as we want to. But that freedom can cause us to not obey the Lord's promptings. Amen. That, that freedom can cause us to make decisions that we know is not of Scripture. And that are totally against God's command. Somebody say, quench the spirit. In Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verse 9 and 10, and he said, Go tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their hearts heavy, and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return to me and be healed. Now I love God because he wants us whole. Amen. He wants us delivered. He don't want us chained and shackled. But this people that Isaiah was describing was a people who was unreceptive. And we live amongst people, Sister Thomas, in our culture that's unreceptive to God, nor the things of the Lord, nor spiritual things. Some people are void of spiritual understanding. Jesus backs up this in Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 14. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive, for the hearts of this people have grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. And so, one of the things that God has is, is blessed us with is the ability to hear mm -hmm. what he instructs. Amen. See, God is, is powerful. He's able to communicate with those in whom he's created. Yeah. And so these people I'm speaking of that are unreceptive, you know, can somebody just give me an example of somebody that's unreceptive? Somebody that just doesn't receive something. Some the, someone who doesn't receive something, what else? A rebellious teenager. A rebellious teenager. Amen. <laughs> Sister uh, uh, Butler? A know-it-all. A know-it-all. A rebellious adult. Or someone who wants to do what they want to do. Want to control. And so, so, so an unreceptive person is all of that. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus was talking to these people and he, he, he reiterated uh, the, the, the same type of people was in Isaiah's day and then they were also in Jesus' day and we are dealing with them in our day. True. People who are unreceptive and it can be all so aggravating. When you try to help somebody and lead them in the right way, and they are unreceptive. And so what he says is, they hear and not understand. Mm -hmm. Understand what? Spiritual truth. Yep. See, the Lord said, you know, that they may know the truth, and the truth will set them free. Yep. And so who's the truth? The Lord is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And so they hear and, 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 and understand not spiritual truth. The reason, a callous heart. See, when your heart is right, you ain't right. I mean, when your heart is not right, you ain't right. <laughs> when your heart is right, you are right. But when your heart is not right, you're not right. You ain't even thinking right. You know, you off. You got the wrong heart. It's like two people get into it and the other one say, man, okay, let's shake hands. No, I'm not shaking hands. It's hard. Something, something in his heart. And he's just going home. Bitter and in bondage. And John says this in 
Uh, 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 Jesus said this in St. John chapter 16. This is a good one. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. However, when he, see, not it or the thing or something, no, he, the spirit of truth has come and he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Now, the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict us when we're quenching his spirit, when we are not following his ways. The Holy Spirit convicts us, convicts us, excuse me, through conviction, not condemning us, but convicting us. What does the Holy Spirit do? He convicts, he convinces, he's convicting and convincing, both words go together, you and I, concerning truth and the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Is This is his job, is to convict us concerning the truth and convince us that God's plan is better than the sin and the, the pleasures of this world. God's plan is much better. And so when we sin, the Holy Spirit will convict us of our need for repentance. You know, one thing about the Holy Spirit, he will convict. And if we habitually, habitually ignore the Holy Spirit and do not repent, the heart will grow hardened to God's word. And so now, you know, you know, what you used to have is no longer. Because you used to hear him and be used greatly. But now, because you have over and over again ignored God, now he don't speak to you anymore. You ever call someone and they don't answer, every time you call them, they don't answer the phone? It's almost like you feel like they ignore you. And so when they do that, you're really not interested in calling them no more. You may not be mad, but you're just like, they don't ever answer their phone. It's not, you don't have a desire to call them. And so likewise, if God is, is calling and he's knocking and he's trying to lead you and use you for his glory and purpose, and you keep ignoring him, Mama. then you're going to quench him. Mm. And it could just be in one small matter of your life. But that small matter means something to the Lord. And so the result of, of, of quenching the Holy Spirit is the loss of sensitivity to the Spirit. This is the result. Loss of sensitivity. If the Spirit speaks to you about God's will for your life and you refuse to take action, a time will come when God's voice will be muted in your life. I got an example in Genesis. Chapter 4. And now Adam, he knew his wife, Eve. And she conceived and bore Cain. Somebody say Cain. Cain. And said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. And then she bore again, and this time a brother, uh, his, his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. And now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Also Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance failed. It's written all over your face. So the Lord said to Cain, 
Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Mm. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. And then this, this, this is heavy. And so the Lord has exposed his heart. But instead of him listening to the Lord, he didn't continue listening. And when you don't listen, you don't prosper. Is that correct? Amen. And so now Cain talked with his brother Abel. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. Wow. Now, this, this, this is a story that we all are familiar with, Cain and Abel. And just think, if he would hearken to the voice of the Lord, just think if he would have owned up, you know, you know, you know, I'm in a rough place right now, right. you know. Uh, just think if he would have said, you know, okay, God, you know, let me do better, you know, and then, then that way, you know, I won't feel so bad when what I'm doing is not accepted. See, it seems like that's hard for people to do. Say, well, you know what, let me change. But instead of changing, he stayed there in that same place. And so what happened? You know, he no longer heard from the Lord because his heart was not sensitive right. to the Lord speaking. And just like Cain, if we continue to stifle God's word to us, that we become no longer sensitive to his voice. And when we're like that, he will not give us a fresh word. And that's why you and I must every time that we hear the word of the Lord, whether it's preached or even whether he's speaking in our spirit, we must respond to the word. Now, this is, this is important. Cain, as a result, had a mark on him. You know, throughout the ages, we're, he's known as, uh, you know, the one who murdered his brother. Uh, and even in today's time, we see civil, civil rivalries. We see uh, people not getting along. We see people feeling like this one had more than I did. Or this one, you know, was mama's pet or mama's favorite or daddy's favorite. We have all these different things. But Cain, is a, he has the, 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 the uh, legacy uh -huh. of not hearkening to God when he had the opportunity right, right there before him. If he would have hearkened to the Lord's voice, if he would have listened to what the Lord was saying to his spirit, he would have been all right. But he didn't. And the result of it was he failed. And he failed good. We must beware of resisting the voice of the spirit in your life. Second person I want to talk about. I'm done. Peter. And I love Peter. Peter was a, a, a soldier. But Peter fell short of the glory of God. What do you mean, Pastor B? Well, what happened was Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to die with you. I'm ready to die. I'm ready to go to jail. They may all run off, but I ain't going nowhere. To the death. I love you all the way to the death. And so when pressure came, not only did he try to handle it in the flesh by cutting off the soldier's ear, but he also began, when pressure was applied, he began to deny the Lord. As the Lord had said, he said, man, listen, the devil desired to sip you like we. Yeah, yeah. But after you've been converted, strengthen your brother. And we know the, the story about Peter. And so he got the cussing out there. And, and, you know, he denied even knowing the Lord. Even being with him. 
But there was a time they were back fishing, and here come Jesus. And boy, when the Lord showed up, everything changed. And so when the Lord talked to, to Peter, you know, Peter was, you know, like, Lord, you know, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. But the Lord said something. If you look in the text, he, he began to talk to him, and he asked Peter this. He said, Peter, do you love me? Now, I want to stop right there because this was a shameful place that Peter was in. He's the big bad disciple. But he was in a, in a bad place because he had failed God. And anytime you fail God, guess what? Shame. Especially when you truly love him. And I do believe that Peter did love the Lord. But he was in a shameful place because he had, he had denied the Lord. The very thing he said that he wouldn't do. That's why we have to depend on the Lord, saints. Because the very thing that you think that you won't do, you'll find yourself doing it. Can you imagine when that rooster crowed, how he looked? I mean, his whole hope was in Christ. Come on now. You know, his whole hope was in Christ. And that's our hope is in him. And so here it was, I failed the Lord. And so here the Lord says to him, do you love me? He said it three different times. And, it's, and, and this was, was, was a, a problem probably to Peter because, you know, why are you saying this on Front Street, Front of all them? We go out and mess up, Lord. And, and we like Peter sometimes. We don't mind the pastor or the prophet take us way over in the corner and talk to us. They can talk good to a bit time. Tell me everything. Tell me how low down I am. Tell me where I see it is in my life. Go ahead and foretell everything. Even tell me I'm going to get a whooping. But boy, when you do it up in front of everybody. Uh -oh. oh, this is a hard thing. And there's going to be times when the Lord is going to speak to us to do the hard thing. He's going to speak to us to rise above where we really are. I'm really comfortable right here. You know, I really don't want to let it go. I really don't want to be forgive. I don't believe this person deserves these blessings. And so we have to remember that the Lord didn't withhold from us. But that he loved us even in our mess, even in our failures. And we mustn't quench the spirit. So Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And the Lord told him to, to do the work, do feed my land. Yeah. And so it may not be comfortable what God is saying to you and me. But one thing about the Lord's sayings, his words will guide us to the abundant life in which he came that we would have. Amen. 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 Let's stand to our feet. I just want to bow for prayer.